Welcome to Bike Light Week. This week, I am gonna be talking about all of my favorite bike lights for everyday biking. This video kicks off the series, and throughout the week, I'm gonna be posting reviews of my favorite lights, but also interviews with the companies that make them, and dig into what makes them special, what you should know, and my goal of this series, as, as silly as it sounds, bike lights are so important to everyday biking. And I wanted to present education this week as if you were coming into a bike shop, which is really hard to do right now, and giving you, you know, kind of my good, better, best of bike lights that I would recommend. And this is also gonna be one of my last video series in my bike shop. So I thought this would be a cool thing to kick off. Today, we are installing a Dynamo light setup on my wife's acoustic city bike. I wanted something that she didn't have to worry about, but is bright and always ready to go. The Dynamo wheel system, the way it works is when your wheel spins by riding, friction from that front hub goes to power your headlight and or your headlight and tail light. I love dynamo lights. I really love the premise that anytime you're riding, you have lights. You don't have to worry about them charging and you don't have to take them off every time you get off your bike and lock it up because they're hardwired and hard mounted. This is a lot like an electric bike with built-in lights that all of my electric bikes have. When you turn on your bike, you can turn on your headlights and taillights and it runs off the battery of the e-bike. I wanted this same foolproof system for my wife's city bike. So I called up my friend Luke at Perennial Cycles because he's a specialist in dynamo lighting. Told him about the bike, told him about my needs, and he built up a front hub and wheel system for me and shipped it off to me. And now I'm going to install it and show you how easy it is to install. If you're interested to learn about the nuts and bolts of dynamo lighting, I also interviewed Luke. So look below for a link to that interview as we talk about all things dynamo lighting. And hopefully this removes some of those barriers of why people haven't been installing dynamo lights in the past. You know, there used to be a lot of friction, used to be more expensive, so forth. This to me on an everyday bike that you plan on having for some years is a great investment instead of having to buy new rechargeable lights every couple of years because either they've been stolen, you lost them, you forget to recharge them, you broke them. All of those things can be prevented with this system and it's always there. So I know my wife always has lights on if she's riding. Oh, and this video is highly caffeinated by Honey Hill in Park Hill, Denver, Colorado. Thank you for the coffee. Here's the package that Luke's team sent me. They built a wheel. I have front and rear lights and a bunch of little bits in there. So let's unbox everything. Here's my wheel. This is a special wheel with a through axle. That's because my wife's city bike is fancy and has a through axle but they make all different types of hubs depending on what your front fork requires. This is a Sun hub, probably one of the best in the industry, really low friction for high power. Bag of goodies. Headlight, this is the Bush and Mueller IQX. Basically Luke said this is what's on his bike and all of his mechanics bikes. And that's when I said, that's what I want. Here's my tail light, another Bush and Mueller. Luke and his team custom built this little bracket for my wife's rear rack. Really fancy. There's my wife's bike. This is a Cannondale city bike called the Quick. It has very little mount places for things, so there's gonna be a lot of zip ties. All right, we have the bike in the stand. The first step is to take off the old front wheel, remove the tire tube, and in this case, I have a disc brake. So I'm gonna remove that disc brake nice and carefully so I don't make it dirty, and put them all on the new wheel. First off, gloves. 
We always need gloves. All right, now I'm putting the wheel on and going to adjust the brake, and then we're going to move on to the actual light install. One thing worth mentioning when you install a dynamo wheel, you want to make sure the connectors on the drive side of the wheel are pointed up towards your handlebars so that you can connect the wires in properly. All right, now we're going to install headlight and taillight. So Luke did a couple things for me to help this process. One, he gave me the right mount. So this is a handlebar mount for my wife's handlebar size. And then you have two wires. The short one is for my fork. He asked me to measure my fork. So it is cut to length. And then it just has this nice plug at the bottom to just plug into where my hub is. And then this longer cable is going to run back to my rear light, which is designed to mount to my rack. So let me get these installed and show you what it looks like. All right, and now we are done. The main advantages to me of a dynamo are that when you ride like this, my front wheel is spinning, my headlight is on, and my rear light is on. And so anytime I'm actively riding, my lights are on. A nicer dynamo setup will also retain some of that energy. So when I'm stopped at a light, uh, maybe for a few minutes after I've stopped riding, the light stays on. So that's the basics of how a dynamo works. So the battery, if you may, which is the front hub, is built onto your bike, pretty locked on. Personally, if my wife was riding this and locking it up a lot of places, I would put a locking skewer on that front wheel. And then the headlight is hard mounted onto the actual handlebars. And then there's these cables that are running back on my bike. On this bike, I had to zip tie them. On other bikes, I might use special metal cable ties. And then Luke at Perennial made that fancy bracket for my rear taillight so it mounts nice and clean to my rear rack. In a perfect world, I believe every single everyday bike would have a dynamo system on it. Some countries in Europe, it's required if you ride at night to have a self-generating light. And that's why uh, if you listen to my interview with Luke, he talks about that where a lot of these light parts and hubs and things like that are coming from Germany because think about how many city bikes we sell in the US. It's exponentially more in Germany and they all have to have this type of lighting on it. So it's very popular there. It's a requirement. It would be like driving a car here without headlights, which just doesn't fly, right? It's not legal. So if you're interested in dynamos, go check out the interview I did with Luke. Hopefully this cleared up some of the um, confusion of Dynamo and that it's complicated because they're not. You just need a good partner like Luke at Perennial. So I'll link below to my interview with Luke and I'm gonna go take my wife's bike home. So until next time, hey, thank you for watching, getting geeked out about lights and by the way, we're gonna be giving away a bunch of lights this week. So make sure to follow along with this bike light week as we dig into different styles of lights. And at the end of the week, I'm gonna post a video with some questions you have to answer to be entered into my light giveaway. So thank you for watching and remember, please bike more and worry less.